transaction that we're imagining was put in place by the system in March. We're just trying to do the same thing the system would have done if they entered an invoice in March, but do it before the cutoff. So it's as of the end of the, the current period. Let's record it out. We're going to say the accounts receivable is going to be up top, the AR. Let's go ahead and hide the reversing entries too, just so we don't get confused by that. AP to AQ, I get confused easy. And then right click and hide. So there we got that. Okay, so now we got the accounts receivable is in AM6. Got to get up early in the morning to record this one in the AM6 and enter. And then we're down here in the sales tax payable down below. Sales tax payable. We're in AM20 equals. We're going to be scrolling over to that $20. That's going to bring the bounce up to the 579 here. Then we're at the sales on down below. We're going to add the sales on the income side of things. We are in AM26. AM26. Making our money in the AM area. So now we're at the 585451. Uh, then we're going to record the cost of goods sold, the 400. 400 down here. Cost to the goods that are sold in AM28. AM28, AM28. You're not 28, you're older than that. AM28. And then we've got inventory. Inventory up there is going to be right here in AM. Uh, seven equals and we're going to be picking up that one that brings the inventory down to the four three five four three four six so we can see down here the impact on the net income is the difference between these two for this for these adjusting entry of one hundred dollars down here on the net income here's the total impact of the net income of our adjusting entries thus far now let's post it to the general ledger there's two points of concern there's actually three points of concern here if you were to do this entry in a journal entry fashion into like accounting software one is the accounts receivable because like quickbooks software won't let you for example enter data into the accounts receivable without entering a customer so it can track it on the sub ledger just like with the inventory i would like not to put it on the sub ledger because i don't i don't want it messing up the sub ledger but quickbooks forcing you to do that is kind of nice most of the time because that makes it impossible for you to basically or nearly impossible to not have your sub ledger tie out. So that's one area we have to deal with. The sales tax payable is kind of like an accounts payable account. So that's something that we often track within like a widget type of thing in accounting software. So that's another area where I'm, I'm a little worried to post to the accounts payable because I don't want to mess up their sales tax accounts payable sub ledger tracker kind of tool that they're going to be using. And then I've got the inventory, which also has a sub ledger to it that we're going to be a little bit worried about so we want to keep those three things uh, uh in mind so i'm going to record this one to the sub ledger so we can see it so let's go 